Chapter 856, He Will Return After the end of the war, the bronze-armored soldiers, albeit exhausted, scattered themselves and searched the entire mountains for Lu Shu. They firmly believed that the Ninth Heavenly King was still alive. Maybe he was resting somewhere in the Changbai Mountains after being wounded, waiting to be rescued. However, people knew that his chances of survival were slim after they failed to find Lu Shu in the Sword Formation Valley. They searched the area inch by inch for three days, but no signs of Lu Shu had been found. More precisely speaking, though, they saw a line of death to the trespassers on a tree trunk beside the latter river. Lu Xiaoyu was sure that it was Lu Xu's handwriting. Yet, Lu Xu must have written it during his fight with the sniping operation squad. It was unrelated to the matter at the Sword Formation Valley. As time went by, Lu Xiaoyu had become increasingly quiet. Filled with anxiety, Chen Zuan tried to comfort her. Xiaoyu, don't do stupid things, please. But Lu Xiaoyu only shot him a cold glimpse. He's not dead. He's simply gone to another world. Of course. Chen Zuan nodded his head firmly. He lives on in our hearts. The little fatty died at the age of 18. Certainly, Lu Xiaoyu would not literally beat him to death, but he would not have been spared a good bashing. The another world that Lu Xiaoyu mentioned referred to the other space connected to the earth via a path under the sword formation. If they could not even find Lu Xu's body, he must have gone to the alternative universe where the puppet masters had come from. He was not dead. At the moment, she was more keen in meeting the puppet masters and clarifying with them about the truth of everything because she had faith in Lu Xu that he would live no matter what environment he was in. In the eight years that they spent together, she had witnessed personally how this young man survived the tough times in his life. Thus, Lu Xiaoyu believed that no one could kill Lu Xu except for he himself. She had also tried to summon Lu Xu's clones. But this time, there was no response from the celestial map. Meanwhile, together with the other Heavenly Network members, Nye Ting was deliberating for a way to travel to the other world. All of them settled around the sword formation, racking their brains for a seemingly unrealistic solution. In the past, Nye Ting sealed the area and conducted patrols personally every month just in case the door to the other world was opened. He was worried that there could be overpowering forces and creatures behind the door. He would not have been so concerned if the gate was situated in other countries. But unfortunately, it was right within the range of the Changbai Mountains. Now, however, he had to open the door because many of his men were eager to enter the alternative world and save the Ninth Heavenly King, their hero. As a result, all of them experienced an unforgettable moment when Ye Ting stood on the cliff and shouted, Open, Sesame One. All of the bronze-armored soldiers thought that they would never believe that Ye Ting could be so childish if they had not seen it with their own eyes. Yet, precisely because of this, they knew that deep down, Ye Ting was anxious too. Lu Xu was one of the greatest contributors of this war. But they had lost him. After the initial apprehension, people had accepted the fact that Lu Xu had gone to another world. They had no idea what the world was called and how Lu Xu was doing inside, or whether there were seasons there. Lu Xu's disappearance was upsetting. After their return to Luo City, Chen Zuan spent most of his time staring into blank space. Even that a good student at Cheng Chiu Chiao also skipped his lessons and dazed off with him. Occasionally people might have a slip of tongue and mention the Ninth Heavenly King, which would then silence the crowd immediately. Moreover, all of the cultivation colleges had renewed Lu Xu's portrait in their corridors. There was a new line added to the description of the Ninth Heavenly King that went, in the Tigerback battle. The Ninth Heavenly King arrived on the back of a dragon and slashed thousands of people with a strike of his sword. Chaos did not follow Lu Xiaoyu back to Luo City. Instead, it perched on the world tree and refused to listen to anybody. Some people had tried to establish communication with Chaos because it was a witness at the scene. Yet, their concern about the language barrier proved to be totally unnecessary because Chaos was not even willing to speak. It was as if Chaos wanted to protect its master's secrets by keeping absolutely silent. 
As for Coral, she bought a hill in the Changbai Mountains and settled down in a house there with a few members of the deities. The deities published a public declaration together with the Heavenly Network, announcing their long-standing rapport and alliance with each other. It was widely thought that Lu Xu was still alive, or maybe they chose to believe so. All of them were waiting for the Ninth Heavenly King's return. The Darkness Kingdom had been exterminated by Li Xianyi after the war. Honestly speaking, though, he was well aware that no ideals could last forever. A new day had come. The school life at Luo Shen Cultivation College had gone back to normal, but something seemed to have changed. Students were asking about the future of Lord Lu's actual combat lessons, only to receive Zhong Yutong's reply that a new teacher would be assigned to the course. That was not a satisfactory solution. Students insisted that they wanted Lord Lu back and wanted the Heavenly Network to find Lord Lu. At that time, many students had reached a consensus in secret that Lord Lu was the only competent teacher for the course. No one else could do as well as him. Hence, no matter who the new teacher was, they would boo him off. Speaking of which, who had the guts and shame to replace Lord Lu? In the afternoon, the training field was teeming with students who were waiting for the arrival of the new teacher. They wanted to commemorate the Ninth Heavenly King via a unique way. Although they knew that it was not nice to do so, but they had to vent their emotions. In fact, the organizer of the farce was Lu Li. At 5 p.m. a skinny girl walked towards the front of the crowd calmly and peacefully. Lu Xiaoyu walked to the front and turned to look at the crowd with a composed look on her face. From today onwards, I will be your relief teacher for the actual combat module until Lu Xu returns. Instantly the crowd started seething with excitement. They did not want to be that mean to her. First of all, Lu Xiaoyu must be more aggrieved than them after Lu Xu's disappearance. Secondly, with the bishop's class A spirit under her control, she could easily defeat all of them within a matter of minutes. A student in the front row could not resist his curiosity but asked, Will Lord Lu return? He will, replied Lu Xiaoyu. Her voice was full of confidence. Adapted from a tale in the 1001 Nights. Chapter 857 A New World. As soon as Lu Xu woke up on the other side of the door, he understood why the puppet masters were weakened after going through the gate. It was speculated that the puppet masters had lowered their power level and were thrown around in the space behind the door. The harsh condition had made Lu Xu pass out straight away. Honestly speaking, Lu Xu admired how the puppet masters could still fight on after passing the tunnel. Admittedly, though, puppet masters could retain their class B powers, but Lu Xu's physical abilities at the moment were no different from a commoner's. He opened his eyes and studied the surroundings. It seemed that he was lying on a cold, hard bed. In the corner of the little adobe house, there was a whole looking farming tool, with crumbs of mud on its surface. The bedding consisted of layers of mud bricks. There was nothing artistic about it as all of the bricks were molded into the standard rectangular shape and were scarcely baked. There was no other furniture beside the bed and a crude wooden table with uneven surface. On top, there was a bowl with a bitten purple steamed corn bun inside. In fact, Lu Xu could not even be sure whether it was really a steamed corn bun. Lu Xu was puzzled. Was he really in the puppet master's homeland? In his imagination, they must have come from a place teeming with powerful people and high-class cuisine that he had never heard of. Although it was true that the food inside the bowl looked foreign to him, it did not look high-class at all. It felt more like he had been sent to a random village unwittingly for voluntary teaching. If this was really the case, what were the puppet masters? The sight before his eyes was too strange to be true, which made Lu Xu wonder whether he had really passed through the right celestial gate. Struggling to sit up, Lu Xu felt as if his bones were falling apart. His shoes were placed neatly beside the bed and it appeared that the owner of the room had left when he was unconscious, unconcerned if Lu Xu could be a thief. Truth be told, though, there was nothing in the room that caught Lu Xu's interest. However, he was definitely going home. 
No matter how great the outside world was, the Earth, and Luo City, were still his favorite place. Some people believed that the strong must shatter the emptiness and venture into another universe. But Lu Xu disagreed. Why must you seek to be beaten up by an even more powerful individual in another world when you could be the best in yours? Lu Xu had no ambition to be the strongest man across the universe. To him, the most ideal life was to get along well in Luo City with Lu Xiaoyu. Hence, at the moment, the greatest desire in his heart was to go home. But he knew that it would take some time. Suddenly, a middle-aged man pushed open the door and entered the room. He had a pole over his shoulders, loaded with two buckets of water. The man looked just like any other earthlings. Lu Xu was puzzled. Was he really on the other side of the celestial gate, or was he in a Changbai village? Lu Xu remained tight-lipped because he did not want to expose himself by speaking the wrong language. Thus, his best shot currently was to act dumb and learn their language. In this way, he would be able to integrate into this world and find his way home. In the next moment, however, the man grinned at him. Hey! Glad that you are awake. Please don't mind my shabby house, would ya? The thing is, it was so strange when I met ya. No offense, please, but ya suddenly collapsed behind ma back when I was busy working in ma farmland. Please. Don't blackmail me. I didn't do anything. Lu Xu was speechless. What's with his accent? Was it really the alternative world behind the gate? This must be a mistake. Lu Xu calmed himself and asked, Where am I? Good that they spoke the same language. At the very least, his identity would not be exposed that easily. Although Lu Xu was a talented foreign language speaker, he was not willing to spend all his time learning all the languages either. As of now, he could speak Mandarin, Japanese, English and Chaos Egeo language one. But Lu Xu was feeling lost. Why did the man keep using honorific speech like the please? It sounded quite strange. Yet, Lu Xu did not voice his confusion because the more he spoke, the more mistakes he might make. Besides, Lu Xu realized that the man's accent was mixed, uncharacteristic of any specific region. The man's face beamed with joy upon hearing Lu Xu speak. He answered, This is Tianging Town. I'm a farmer here. I'm Zhang Weiyu. Where are yo from? Are yo hungry? I can cook a chicken for yo, if yo like, please? Lu Xu dismissed him with a wave. We can talk about food later. I'm having a bad memory at the moment. Let me ask you. Does here? I mean this world here, have a name? Zhang Weiyu seemed stunned by the question. Of course. What is it? Lu Xu's eyes brightened. Luniverse. Lu Xu was confused. This time, it was Lu Xu's turn to be stunned. Wait a minute. Is it because of your accent? The universe? The Luniverse? Zhang Weiyu shot him a puzzled look and wrote Luniverse on the table with his saliva. Then, he said, Luniverse. Correct. There's nothing wrong with my pronunciation. WTH? Lu Xu drew a startled breath. On the bright side, he had indeed passed through the celestial gate. Nevertheless, the name of this world was rather hard to accept. Why? Was this his Lu ancestor's world? Why was it called the Luniverse? Moreover, in Chinese, universe is translated as Yuzhou, and the two characters refer to space and time respectively, which makes it sensible that their combination means the entire world. But how about this Luniverse too? Only then did Lu Xu notice that the man was dressed casually in shorts and a t-shirt. Not only that, he was wearing straw sandals and his belt was nothing but a twisted straw string. Lu Xu studied Zhang Weiyu. Deprived of his sensory abilities, he could no longer determine the power level of this man. Nevertheless, he noticed a sense of smartness in his tone of speech. Yet, 
Given his extreme politeness at the moment, it seemed that he had mistaken Lu Xu as some significant figure. Suddenly, Zhang Weiyu yelled at Lu Xu, as if he had just realized that he had been fooled, get off my bed, you loser. Do you seriously think that you can fool me with your fake upper-class accent? And stop lying about your memory. Such an overused excuse. Lu Xu was confused. What an ill-founded accusation. Yet, the best strategy at the moment was to play by hand. Be it an aristocrat or a farmer, he had to first become a man of this world. This time, Lu Xu exercised extra caution because he knew this world was not as peaceful as the earth due to the puppet masters. Lu Xu listened to him and got off the Clay Kong 3. He made a genuine apology. Sorry. My memory is really messed up right now. So I'd like to know what's going on. Then, Zhang Weiyu rolled his eyes and said, Don't lie. Tell me the truth. Did you run away from your landlord's house because you got yourself into trouble? Never mind. It doesn't matter who you are. Do you want to make a living here? Chinese pun intended here as English and Ijio share the same pronunciation in Chinese. In Chinese, Luniverse is a Lu Zhou. A traditional long platform for general living, working, entertaining and sleeping used in the northern part of China. Chapter 858, Seal of a Slave Make a Living? Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu and hesitated. What intentions did this middle-aged man have? Lu Xu had realized that this world was not full of experts like the puppet masters. To put it in a worse-sounding way, before he had come to this world, there were very few people who were as poor as Zhang Weiyu. But Lu Xu did not quite want to accept what Zhang Weiyu had said. After all, he was not familiar with this place. He might not even know even if he was sold off. What do you want me to do? Lu Xu asked. Plant the crops. Zhang Weiyu exclaimed with determination. Lu Xu was speechless. He had gone through a mighty celestial gate. Rationally, he should have embarked on an expedition and encounter various experts. How did he come to a farmland? This did not make sense. If Lu Xiaoyu heard about this, she would die laughing. When he returned, he would be like a traveler who explored distant lands. Everyone would ask him what he had done in this world. He would say that he planted crops and harvested them. It was just that the Kong one was a bit hard. Is this what the Ninth Heavenly King should be doing? Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu and replied, Okay. Lu Xu was a very pragmatic person. No matter what the situation was, he would settle down first and understand what this world was like first before deciding whether to leave or not. If he had to plant crops, then he would plant crops. Outside the mud brick house was a lush field. The sun was very bright. Lu Xu consciously shielded his eyes. Lu Xu was very sure that the sun was not very different from the earth's sun, but he was not sure whether they were the same. Zhang Weiyu carried a pickaxe and cheerily walked in front of Lu Xu. Let me tell you, although I'm not a landlord or an aristocrat, no household has a field as large as mine. No matter how heavy the taxes are, or whether there was a disaster, I, Zhang Weiyu, have never sold a piece of land, even if I have to eat tree roots. Zhang Weiyu led the way, and Lu Xu followed behind. He observed Zhang Weiyu carefully. His boasting was impressive, but he was very thin. Furthermore, he had seen the black food on the table at home. Zhang Weiyu turned and looked at Lu Xu. What, do you not believe me? Of course, why wouldn't I? You know your place. Lu Xu said earnestly, I believe that you've eaten tree roots. From Zhang Weiyu's distress, plus 399. When Lu Xu saw the distress points, he was speechless. The celestial map and the sea of Qi had been locked up, but he still continued to earn distress points. The problem was, so what if he earned distress points here? They were of no use. He was sure that chaos had broken free. This meant that with the strength of a class A, 
he would be able to break free under 20 minutes. This gave Lu Xu some hope. At least he knew that it was not impossible to break free. At that moment, a group of over 10 people who looked like farmers walked over. Lu Xu realized that they had the same brand on the right side of their neck. Lu Xu did not know what it was. It looked like a gold ingot. Not long after, another group came. This time, there was a brand on the back of their hands. But the brand looked like a very ugly knife. Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu's neck, but there was nothing there. Lu Xu said curiously, You said that you have the most land, but I see that the rest are eating fine. Only you are so thin. From Zhang Weiyu's distress, plus 199. Zhang Weiyu was silent for a long time. Can you compare me, a member of peasant household, to those slaves? Was that on purpose? I earn 80% of the annual earnings. It's comparable to that of landlords and aristocrats. But even if I starve to death, I will not become their slave. Lu Xu understood. So those brands were the seal of a slave? Lu Xu suddenly felt that there was something wrong with Zhang Weiyu's words. Why did he say that he did not want to become their slave? Did this mean that he could become the slave of others? He sounded as if they had the strength of character. But it was understandable that slaves could live a better life than peasant households. This was common when there were slaves in history. As slaves were the private property of landlords, they lived a better life compared to the peasant households. Wise people would not use their own money to buy slaves, only to treat them like consumables. On the other hand, the peasant households were exploited by the upper classes. They became poorer over time. The upper classes wanted to drive them to a dead end and take their land, while the peasants became their slaves. This way, everything would belong to them. This was a necessary process to obtain riches. This was the process of desire expanding. Of course, slaves had a good life relative to that of the peasants. They had food to eat and clothes to wear. But before Lu Xu could understand everything, Zhang Weiyu threw a side glance of him. I see you have the strength of character to run away. Very good. Anyway, where is your brand? Lu Xu was dumbfounded. He chose the safest and least obvious place. On my buttocks. Zhang Weiyu's expression grew serious. No wonder you wanted to run away. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Lu Xu felt that he might have said something wrong. What a chaotic society with slaves. In his world, slaves had not existed for many years. Lu Xu hesitated. He felt that there was something not right with Zhang Weiyu. He also felt that the seals were strange. First, Zhang Weiyu was awed. How could a peasant in such a society be literate? Lu Xu felt that this was not possible. This place was not like Earth, but Lu Xu did not believe that there were nine years of compulsory education here. There was something wrong with Zhang Weiyu. But Zhang Weiyu was as thin as a matchstick. Lu Xu was trained in swordplay. It was obvious whether someone had trained through their way of walking. But Zhang Weiyu did not seem like he had undergone training. Wait. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. He had seen a similar seal on earth, for example, the white flame on the right of Cloudy and Tiger Ji's necks. Were the puppet masters the slaves of their king? This was highly possible. He did not know what class the king belonged to in this world. Did he have to meet the king? After all, the puppet masters could not come back. He would say to the king, I am good friends with the puppet masters. They said that I could be under the care of the king here. After some deep thought, Lu Xu decided to see the situation before making a decision. After all, he did not quite understand the puppet masters, it would be interesting if he went too far. Before long, they reached Zhang Weiyu's field. Lu Xu looked out and realized that he did not recognize any of the plants. A traditional long platform for general living, working, entertaining and sleeping used in the northern part of China, where the winter climate is cold. 
It is made of bricks or other forms of fired clay and more recently of concrete in some locations. Chapter 859 You Reap What You Sow When Lu Xu saw the unappetizing food on the table, he could understand why Cloudy loved to go to different places to eat. A place would become more sophisticated as civilization progressed. This was very likely to happen. Of course, Lu Xu believed that the puppet masters would be able to eat the best food, given their position here. But he was not sure whether it would be as good as the food on earth. Looking at how Cloudy looked for good food everywhere, probably not. Lu Xu did not care about the crops in front of him. He would do as Zhang Weiyu allowed him to. He would basically do odd jobs like weeding. But Lu Xu's body was very weak now. It was very hard for those who had not worked on the fields before to imagine how tiring it was. It was more tiring than an hour or two in the gym. At the gym, one would train different muscles. There was even time to rest. But this was different. Only a few muscles were used over and over again. Zhang Weiyu looked at Lu Xu in disdain. A slave like you with a brand on their buttocks can't work? You live in comfort every day, so you don't have experience with this, right? Lu Xu was silent. He felt as if Zhang Weiyu was scolding him. A slave like him? Tell me, what kind of slave am I? You reap what you sow. After a while, Zhang Weiyu slowly took out a black steamed bun from his pocket. He was going to give it to Lu Xu. But when he saw Lu Xu's progress, he was dumbfounded and took half of the bun away. Lu Xu was speechless. Was this his retribution for being too petty back then? Is this what they call karma? But Lu Xu did not challenge him. He would eat as much as he contributed. He took one bite and coughed. Zhang Weiyu cheerily laughed. What? You've never eaten anything like this before, right? If you can't eat it, return it to me. Don't waste it. But before he could finish speaking, he saw Lu Xu swallow the black bun. Zhang Weiyu did not know what kind of life Lu Xu had lived in the past. After Lu Xu finished eating, he smiled. I'm fine. Zhang Weiyu looked at Lu Xu. He did not speak and continued to work. As he weeded the ground, he said, I did not give that to you on purpose. In this world, there are times when this bun is more important than a human life. The taxes are very heavy. It's good enough to be able to live. Lu Xu asked curiously, if the taxes are so heavy, and people are being driven to their deaths, does no one care about this? Zhang Weiyu said with disdain, you don't look too old, so you might not know. It was not like this over ten years ago. They would never dare to do this when the old king of gods was still around. With so many years of war and chaos, at least there are still people planting crops. The lords of heaven only care about their internal strife. Why would they care about people like us? Wait. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. He adjusted his tone to sound more formal. Indeed, I have never experienced the rule of the old king of gods. What happened to him? Furthermore, what is happening among the lords of heaven? We didn't talk about them back then. Zhang Weiyu sneered. The slave owners live a life of luxury and dissipation. Why would they care about things like this? The aristocrats would care about this. The slave owners just have to rely on them to live. Now, there is a conflict between the Lord of Heaven here, Wen Zaifu, and the West Lord of Heaven, Duanmu Huangqi. Perhaps a war will break out one day. If you don't want to fight, you can, what's wrong with you? Lu Xu was dumbfounded. When he heard the phrase, Lord of Heaven, he felt that something was wrong. After that, when he heard Wen Zaifu and Duanmu Huangqi, he was even more shocked as he had heard these names before. A long time ago, when he was fighting Ming Yueye in the Black Pearl, Ming Yueye was not willing to reveal his name and identity, but he revealed a lot of information. The North Lord of Heaven, Qing Kong. The South Lord of Heaven, Wen Zaifu. The West Lord of Heaven, Duanmu Huangqi. 
the East Lord of Heaven, Yu Fuyao. Back then, Lu Xu did not take the title of Lord of Heaven to heart. But he remembered all these special names. Before Zhang Weiyu spoke, Lu Xu had thought that Mingyuaya was just pretending to be serious. He only believed a small portion of what he had said. After all, that Mingyuaya was not normal. He did not seem honest. But now, Lu Xu realized that although Mingyuaye had not revealed his identity, he had revealed some information. Now, Lu Xu was very anxious. He suddenly realized that Mingyuaye was from this world. He wanted to ask Mingyuaye if there was any way to leave. He could ask him what this world was. After all, they were old friends. Back then, when Lu Xu was lonely, he would drink with Mingyuaye. He had many things that he could not tell others and could only keep to himself. Although he continued to hold back, he rather enjoyed talking to Ming Yuaya. Lu Xu believed that if he asked him for unimportant information, he might reveal some secrets. But Lu Xu was annoyed. He could not access the Seal of Lands. Thus, he would not be able to retrieve the Black Pearls from the Seal of Lands. What was this? From Zhang Weiyu's words, Lu Xu could understand this world better. The old king of gods divided and conferred land, and the four lords of heaven helped him to open up new territory. Slowly, the slave society of today was formed. This slave society had formed because of exploitation. At first, it was fine as everyone could still survive. But for some reason, the old king of gods had disappeared. The new king of gods did not care about what was happening. In the end, the taxes kept rising, while the populace lived in dire poverty due to the strife among the lords of heaven. Thus, it was very difficult for everyone to survive. But Lu Xu did not care whether these people would be able to survive. He only cared about whether he would be able to go home. Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu and asked, Training. He had just said one word when Zhang Weiyu laughed. What, you still want to train? Then why did you run away? The aristocrats are the one with training techniques. You have to crawl to them before you can obtain any techniques. If you have no seal, who is going to give you techniques? Furthermore, even if you are a slave of a slave owner, you might only be able to reach rank 5. Lu Xu understood. Social classes restricted progress and advancement. This was a world where those who were powerful controlled the means to become stronger. Thus, classes were fixed. Rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 should respond to class A, B, C, D, E, and F respectively. This meant that the techniques that the slave owners possessed were only class E at best. Zhang Weiyu did not know that Lu Xu, who he was mocking, was invincible before he came to this world. Chapter 860 Female Slave Owner Rank 1 was not the peak. Above it were the Lords of Heaven, then the King of Gods. If you want to train, said Zhang Weiyu as he glanced at Lu Xu, you have to enter the Lord of Heaven's Imperial Palace. If not, you might only be able to reach rank 2 as a slave of the aristocrats before you die. What's the point? Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu. Hmm. He actually had some foresight. But to enter the palace, you have to be castrated. Ha! <laughs> ha! Zhang Weiyu laughed maliciously. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Die one. Zhang Weiyu rolled his eyes. You illiterate. Castrate. The sure in a sure li tu. It means to neuter. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. He recalled that something like this had happened in the past back on Earth. Castrate, neuter, spay. But could he be accused of being illiterate? Top student Lu Xu could not stand this humiliation. He was silent for two seconds. I understand. But have you heard of Shir Ryu Peju 3, Renduo Shir Zhong 4, Chu Yan Fu Shir 5, Shir Biu Liang Li 6? From Zhang Weiyu's distress, plus 666. Zhang Weiyu gasped in shock. He could not look straight at these phrases. 
Lu Xu went into a deep thought. It was as if some parts of this world coincided with that on Earth. Why could he access the place where Ming Yueya was being locked up from Earth? Lu Xu was confused by many things. Just as Lu Xu was deep in thought, there was a sudden sound of horses galloping in the distance. Zhang Weiyu quickly dragged Lu Xu to the field and said softly, Don't provoke these slave owners. Lu Xu quietly looked at them. The sound came from the town. It was said that the slave owners all lived in the town, while the peasants lived in the countryside. Land was extremely expensive in town. Every business was owned by an aristocrat or slave owner. Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu. Was this also a place where the generals and ministers of state were considered nobility? Zhang Weiyu laughed. In this society, the king of gods is the highest, followed by the lords of heaven, the aristocrats, the slave owners, and the peasants. But the king of gods is like the greatest slave owner. According to Zhang Weiyu, the respective lords of heaven possessed the strongest techniques and slaves. The classes were naturally formed according to strength. Those who had rank two techniques were aristocrats, while only lords of heaven and the king of gods had rank one techniques. This system was hard to overthrow. After all, they were no match for the upper classes. There were also some geniuses. Some small slave owners had developed rank two techniques by themselves. After they were offered amnesty by the lords of heaven, they were given new positions. Lu Xu pondered. His techniques, no matter whether it was the Hall of Swords or the Celestial Map, were very strong. It would not be a problem for him to reach Class A, it was possible for him to aspire for Shinsong Jing. He was already invincible after lighting up the fourth level of Nebula. What was beyond this? Lu Xu suddenly formed a strange confidence that not even the Lords of Heaven possessed. According to Zhang Weiyu, the aristocrats in this world values knowledge, just like the slave societies of the past. Some could become household tutors. Some cultured slaves were worth an entire ranch. A group of horses and people galloped over. The horses were tall and muscular. They were like the mutated creatures on Earth. Everyone in the group had the seal of a knife on the back of their hands. They seemed very fierce and tough. Lu Xu was surprised that a lady was leading the group. Zhang Weiyu pulled Lu Xu away. Don't look at them. The lady got off from her horse and turned to look at Lu Xu. She continued walking forward. Lu Xu bent over and continued weeding. The female had brought a halter with her. Zhang Weiyu bent down even lower. He almost went underground. He just did not want to be noticed. The lady smiled. Zhang Weiyu, are you still not willing to sell your land? How long are you going to hold on to it? Zhang Weiyu lowered his head and smiled obsequiously. Maybe a few more years. If you become my slave, you would lead a much better life, said the lady with a smile. I feel that even though I am not a slave, I am living a good life. Although Zhang Weiyu was smiling obsequiously, he did not give in. Lu Xu felt that there was something wrong with Zhang Weiyu. Not only could he read, he was still very stubborn even though he was so weak. Were there still civilians who were not afraid of death in times when human life was worthless? Very good. The lady waved the halter in her hands and smiled. You are very strong, stronger than these slaves. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. It was a slap in the face to the slaves by the side. How would your slaves feel? The lady turned and looked at Lu Xu. And where are you from? Zhang Weiyu quickly said, he is my distant nephew. I called him over to help me. Oh. The lady nodded her head. You are handsome and good-looking. Are you willing to be my slave? I can assure that you will be able to live well if you join me. Lu Xu was silent. It did not seem like a bad deal. But was he really going to be a slave in this world? Lu Xu said with a sense of justice, I'll have to ask my uncle about this. 
My uncle has the final say in all my important life decisions. After all, I am unable to make good decisions. From Zhang Weiyu's distress, plus 299. Zhang Weiyu was planning to be an observer, but how did he get involved? The lady's expression darkened. Zhang Weiyu started to panic. Dumb child, you should make your own decisions. I can't say what path is most suitable for you. Lu Xu turned and looked at the lady. My uncle said that he can't say. From you dies distress, plus 666. The lady called you die laughed. Very good. You are very strong. She suddenly turned and said to the slaves, tell the other slave owners that I have set my mind on him. No one is allowed to take him. The Yu family will give half of our profits to them. Lu Xu was speechless. What a unique lady. After the group left, Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu with doubt. Zhang Weiyu laughed. This lady studied in the Lord of Heaven's palace. I don't know what she studied about morals. The stronger you are in character, the safer you are. Her father died in a war. Thus, she is the head of the Yu family. At night, Lu Xu's hand shook even as he drank water from a can. This was the result of relaxing after using his muscles. He had not experienced this for a very long time. He had no strength to even lift very light objects. Zhang Weiyu looked at Lu Xu and laughed. You've never worked on the fields before, right? Rest well today and work hard for the next few days. I don't accept idlers here. Lu Xu looked at Zhang Weiyu, but did not speak. To be castrated, Chu Shi, in Chinese sounds like to die. Shi Li means power in Chinese. This means, like a hot knife through butter. This means, overwhelm with numbers. This means, play up to those in power. This means, irreconcilable differences. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And then we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 